Broncos are back, and so is the DNVR Broncos podcast live from the Toyota Lounge inside the DNVR bar. Fellas, how are we doing today? Great. It's a nice weather day outside. You know, yeah. it's been up yeah. and down and round around, but I feel like, you know, the Denver sky is finally coming correct and giving us some good weather. So hopeful for the future. Mm. Hopeful that my golf game, <laughs> you know, gets better wow. in this warm weather. Because my excuse was I didn't, I couldn't go play. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So when I did play, I hadn't played. It was raining. Exactly. It was cold, whatever. Now, sun's out, so let's get it Just going. got to figure it out. Sun's out, gun's out? Yeah. Yeah. Did, did uh, you play any golf this weekend? Nope. It was all football for me. Mm. I had football literally from 7 a.m. Saturday morning <laughs> to like 5 p.m. Sunday afternoon. Wait, are you unretiring? Are you pulling a Tom Brady? Or <laughs> no, are you talking no, about no, 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 no. Just, ki just kids and, and uh, family football. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Henry, did you get football. out there? Play football? No. Um, I uh, I did see the Jets' new uniforms this morning, though. They were good. Oh, but yeah. I thought someone told me last week that no uni uniforms could be good. No, they've they've been terrible recently. And, I mean, the flip side of that is that they had given the Jets new uniforms two years ago, and they were terrible, uh -huh. so they redid them. Mm -hmm. But the redo is actually pretty good, which is I'm a little more optimistic because we're only a week away from seeing the Broncos uniforms. Week away from that. A week away, just over a week away from the draft. We can yep. see it next Thursday night. Broncos get that pick. And I started the show by saying the Broncos are back. They're back in the facility today yep. for the first time as the mm -hmm. 2024 Broncos players are reporting for the offseason program. Todd, was this a, a good day or a bad day being a player? I think it was a good day. It was like a start to the new season, so everything feels like it's possible. Anything is possible. You know what I'm saying? If we figure mm -hmm. it out, we could get to the Super Bowl. We could, you know, make the playoffs. Um, all our goals are still in front of us, so it felt like a good day. And then so tomorrow's bad because today's like first day of school. Vibes uh -huh. are good. You get to see all the guys again, and then tomorrow it's like, ah, shit, now we just got to do sprints. No, tomorrow's still good because okay. it's, it's not too bad, especially like when you first come into OTAs. Like I think their number one concern is nobody getting hurt. Yeah. Yeah. So everything is like, it's really like a ramp up. So for a lot of guys, if you're doing what you're supposed to do as a player, you're actually <laughs> uh, training not as hard as you've been training mm. this week. And it kind of ramps back up to where you've been training at. And that's what Sean, at least last year, mm -hmm. really wanted was a true ramp up. Uh -huh. There's some coaches, I'm sure you've been around them, Todd, that yep. um, believe that you should come into to the offseason workout program ready to go so they can hit the ground running or just have like one week of ramp up mm -hmm. last year at least sean was all about the ultimate ramp up uh even when it comes to like the the mental side of the game and the classroom stuff he wasn't having anyone do any classroom stuff yeah. until otas rolled around so he really delayed the process last year i think it's like technically the first two weeks you're only allowed to do uh um, conditioning work mm -hmm. and then the next three or four weeks you're allowed to be on the field but no pads or like no offense against defense it's just working against air yep. um, and then finally when OTAs actually roll around the middle of May is when uh, uh, you get to go offense against defense and it looks like actual football last year Sean for the first like five or six weeks just had the guys doing conditioning um, no classwork mm -hmm. stuff so it was really short days yeah, those are the best. I feel like this is like a good time um, in football, especially for your family, because you get time off, but you also get to, you know, perfect your craft and get home by like two o'clock. Like it's a good time. Yeah, I will say, I mean, they did start 0 and 4 last year <laughs> and maybe just a little more work in the classroom might have made have helped out. It might not have mattered. Who knows? But I I think I might be just a little bit skeptical of like the off season decisions that are made when you come out slow. I sure. think that that's fair. So yeah, I'm I'm curious if they do the same thing this year. If that was just like a first time in the building type deal, or or how this is all going to play out. And you and you also got to remember, like in OTAs, when you have a new head coach, you actually start earlier. Yeah. Too. True. Yeah. So I think his ramp up period was a little bit longer because mm -hmm. they point. were in the building a little bit earlier. So maybe this year he kind of 
speeds it up a little bit. Yeah, the Broncos yeah. are the last team to get in the building, mm-hmm. tied with like 20 other teams, uh-huh. because like you said, the other teams were able to start two weeks ago with new head coaches. Some teams started last week as well. But Henry, you bring up an interesting point just about the slow starts, because a lot of times, especially um, when this town is so football Broncos oriented and mm-hmm. dominant, sometimes people read into things too much. Maybe there is some truth to that. So these slow starts and stuff like I, I remember um, specifically when it comes to passing camps with like Peyton Manning mm-hmm. would always hold a little passing camp right around this time, right mm-hmm. before the players would start. And then so when Peyton retired, it was like, oh, well, is Trevor Simeon going to yeah. hold the passing camp? Well, Mark Sanchez did. That was great. Then uh, I remember like Joe Flacco didn't and he got um, from media a lot of crap from that. Are, is there anything to stuff in April truly translating to September, October, November? I think not? so. I think it's, you know, time and continuity together with your players. I think even for a linebacker, the linebackers that I played with longer, I felt like I had a better feel and understanding for my game because I understood how they played. So just being able to get with um, receivers as a quarterback, you got to understand their timing, mm-hmm. um, sometimes where they're best at catching the football, so you understand where to throw it to them. So it's not just throw and catch. It's a lot of, like, uh, intricate detail when it comes to being – you know, the starting quarterback and the starting wide receiver. So I think it does translate, and I think it is uh, beneficial to get together. What's it like on the defensive side? Because obviously you're not throwing and catching, and also you're in the same defense as the year before, at uh-huh. least the Broncos are this time. So so what is there What is there to talk about at this point? Um, I think it's just understanding each other as players. Mm-hmm. Like we can talk about things that we saw last year that we didn't know we were going to get and kind of mm-hmm. – refresh our memory like hey remember when we get these two by two sets and they come to condensed splits because we run a lot of cover three they love to do this so now we're talking about it, expecting it so now when we do get to the game we're like ready and prepared for it um, and then also just being able to kind of talk about the different details of our game like when we do get a bunch what are we doing in that yeah. when we do get a stack how are we treating that what if you're a corner do you like to play off in the stack and one, one uh, like if we're in man, yeah. would you rather be the off corner or the up corner? I prefer the off corner. You know what I'm saying? So like <laughs> now when we go to the, you know OTAs and training camp, we already talked about the situation. Yeah. So when they motion to a stack and we haven't seen it all training camp, I already know you want to go down, so I'm going to back up and I'm going to play the game. Mm-hmm. So I think there is a lot of detail to iron out even if you are a defense. Okay. So how important are these coach or the, these conversations player to player as opposed to coach to player? Because all of those things that you just said kind of seem like it's between you and teammates happening. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think it's most important between player to player because we're the ones that are out there. Yeah. I think you need the coach to kind of like mm-hmm. iron out certain rules and techniques. Um, but ultimately, like what happens in the game and what's best for like the players is how the players see it, you know, playing out. So um, it's most important, man. Did you ever hold the inside linebackers camp? <laughs> no, no, I never had you a full long camp. You never wanted to fly camp. the guys out to like Duke or something? Heck no, heck and, no. Uh, I was, you know what I'm saying? I was uh, undrafted. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I was penny pinching for yeah. a long time. Uh, but I talked to them a lot once we got in the building. Yeah. Once the Broncos were paying for it, we could talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are players, this is something that I'm never really got an answer. Are players paid during these months? Because they are... They're voluntary uh-huh. off-season workouts, but very much in air quotes, voluntary. Typically, the only time you see a guy miss is if they have something going on and they miss one day uh-huh. or max like one week. Or if there's a holdout going on, for the most part, attendance is like 98%. Is it truly they're just showing up to try to make the team and get better? Or is there like a little stipend? Yeah, you're, you're s- supposed to be there. I mean, it's, it's voluntary is what they mm-hmm. say, but... Um, if you're not there and then you're not playing come August, like, you know why. <laughs> come on. Uh, so it's voluntary. But you do get, like, a little something. I mean, compared to what you make in the season, right. it's, it's nothing. Yeah, I right. mean, it's enough to get gas and, and make it to the facility. Yeah. So <laughs> it is a little something there um, just so that you're not starving. And so now they just give you an electric car and they don't even have to give you that gas stipend. Yeah, wow. <laughs> just charge it up and come on. <laughs> Hopefully the car doesn't get stolen uh, twice. Well. But same person. Same person. Yeah. <laughs> who's no longer on the team. <sighs> it's a shame. You start drawing some lines and uh, <laughs> yeah. see who that was. But let's hop in to this conversation because the Broncos have had uh, a decent amount of turnover on their roster over the past couple of months. And we had this conversation a month ago, 
kind of right before free agency of what were the Broncos' biggest needs going into free agency. Now let's have the conversation entering the draft because barring the Broncos signing Tom Brady, trading for an inside linebacker, drastic move, this is the team that the Broncos are going to have going into the draft. So while the Broncos have their draft board set, they also probably have, maybe it's not an actual position need board set, but they understand what their biggest needs are on the team entering the draft. Is it just so obvious what the number one need is for this team right now? Yeah. I mean, there's a case to be made that, like, Jared Stidham at least has started some games. But even now at center, you have a guy you brought in in Sam Musfer who started some games. Who started more games than Jared Stidham. It's true. So, I mean, I think that, like, quarterback, you could make the case. You have so many holes where you just don't have somebody you trust to be a starter uh, that, that's kind of even. But it's a quarterback position. It's the most important. So, I, it really is just open and shut. You need a, you need a quarterback more than anything else right now. Todd, any any case you can make against that? No, I'm right there with it. Quarterback's the most important position in this league. We've mm-hmm. found that out very quickly. Um, <laughs> so we need a quarterback, and and that's it. Yeah, it's just cut and dry. It's that simple. Um, the Broncos tried to maybe make it so they didn't need the quarterback this much by reaching out to Sam Darnold, having conversations with him. Uh, but they didn't want to pay him the $10 million that the Vikings were willing to give him. So mm-hmm. they like kind of tried. But if you're kind of trying at the quarterback position, I would just rather have them did what the Broncos did and like not dip their toe in the water and be halfway in on a quarterback. Just need the quarterback. Mm-hmm. And uh, you never want to be desperate. But go all in on the next quarterback instead mm-hmm. of just going halfway in. So that's, without a doubt, the number one biggest need for the Broncos. But then you look at two. Is it wide open from there, or is there a position that you think is glaring? Because I think if you don't have a Toyota, then that's your second oh, biggest boy. glaring position wow. on the team because you need to stock up on the Toyotas. And we've given, especially Todd and I, have given a lot of love to the RAV4. Henry has, too. Didn't you build a big black one um, over on their website <laughs> that last was a week? Yeah, oh, that yeah, was yeah, a yeah, forerunner. Yeah, that was a forerunner. What did I say? Oh, you said RAV4. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, yeah. I'm, I'm at forerunner. Um, but the other one that you should not sleep on, the all-electric BZ4X. This thing looks sweet. Oh, really? It, it, I mean, it, yeah, it looks awesome. And, of course, it's all electric. One of their newer cars, I believe last year was their first year of having that model. And that's just one of, like, nearly 20 uh, electric hybrid vehicles that they have over at Toyota. And if you want to get your hands on one, of course, you can also get the Supra, which is Henry's favorite. Um, they have so many cool models over there and they're so affordable too like i'm looking at this supra brand new one starting at twenty nine thousand dollars for what looks like an awesome sports car and if you want to get your hands on any of these toyotas check out your toyota front range store where they've got many locations near you auto nation toyota rapo and centennial uh corwin toyota in boulder Groove Toyota in Littleton, Mountain States Toyota in Denver, Stevenson Toyota East in Aurora, and Stevenson Toyota West in Lakewood. Toyota, official automotive partner of the NFL and official vehicle of DNVR. Damn, I might need to go buy a car. Um, (laughs) Bet365 is awesome. It was obviously a big betting week for me last week at the Masters. Mm -hmm. I broke just about even because I took Scotty Scheffler before the tournament at like four to one odds. There Mm. you go. So it paid for the rest of the bets on guys who couldn't beat him. Um, He's yeah. good. He is really good. And it just sucks. It, it feels like there's been like eight of these tournaments in a row, like eight major tournaments in a row where it's just like the back nine doesn't even matter because there's like a four shot lead. Yeah. But he's good. So there's that. And at least I didn't lose money on it. Um, it's also a big betting time coming up. Yeah. Uh, Playing games for the mm-hmm. NBA, I believe, start tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so I've got to figure out what I'm betting there. Uh, I, I almost think. There's enough talk about the Lakers throwing this game and winning the next one that I almost want to buy in and just go put my money on wow. the other side. So yeah. that they would avoid the Nuggets? Yeah. Is no, that like, the thought if, process behind exactly. it? Exactly. Like, if you go on Lakers Reddit, it's like, we just throw this one and then we can win the next one. Like, those other two teams aren't all that good. We can dodge the Nuggets. To play what? OKC instead of Denver? Yeah. So you play a team that has, like, no playoff experience exactly. instead of playing the defending exactly. champ? So I'm, I'm just a tiny bit tempted to put some money on the Lakers to lose tomorrow. No, Lakers are going to win. 
They should, but I haven't checked the odds yet. But if, if, depending on the odds, like they, they might have a decent chance. So there's that one going on. Uh, but then there's obviously uh, the NHL playoffs yeah. where the Avs are not looking so hot, <laughs> which is say, a real are you shame. Betting on the Avs, I this weekend. I mean, by the brutal. By the time the playoffs start, which is what they start the 22nd, so next Monday. By then, maybe I'll be excited again. But right now, it has been really tough to watch. Yeah. Um. So. All of this is about to happen, which means you should be signing up for Bet365. This is a great time to do it um, because you can take their bet and get offer, place about $5 or more, get $150 in bonus bets. You can bet on all these things and start with just like a nice amount in your account for playoff season. Um, or you can take the first bet safety net offer by placing a bet up to $1,000. If that bet loses, you receive a matched refund in bonus bets. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. Um, use the code DMVR365 when you sign up. Must be 21 or older, physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. The draft is next Thursday. Yep. And that means we're going to be at the Breckenridge Brewery Farmhouse next Thursday, 530 Start time going through the end of the first round draft. If you want to meet Henry, if you want to meet Todd, if you want to meet Ryan, if you want to see some Super Bowl 50 memorabilia, mm. I might bring uh, some pretty cool stuff by. So make sure to buy a ticket for this over at thednvr.com, or of course you can check out our social pages, dnvr underscore Broncos. The link is going to be on there on Twitter X. So make sure to get your tickets. The $15 ticket gets you a beer, burger, and the opportunity to come and hang out and catch the draft with us. Um, uh, it's going to be a fun draft. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. I don't think the Broncos pick a 12. I don't think, and I don't let's think say so this, I don't think you want to be late to this party. Either. That is definitely true. The thing is, I also don't think they'll trade down. I'm even more confident they don't trade down than I am that they won't pick at 12. So they're trading. There's uh, only one option left. Uh, yep. Or <laughs> the way up. they're forfeiting their pick. I was going to say, oh, yeah. that could be it. If they, they trade this year's first round pick to someone for next year's first round pick, is that trading down? I, th I don't know if it technically is. I'd have to go back through the parameters from the guy who basically found since 2007, the Saints traded down 24 times and never traded up once. No, opposite. Hmm. Oh, sorry. Traded up 24 times, never traded down once. And then last year, obviously, they trade up to get Riley Moss, which brings it to 25. So you're 25 to zero in terms of trade ups versus trade downs with Sean Payton. So <laughs> I, it's, it's pretty obvious which way he wants to go. 100%. Wait, real quick before we move on yeah. from uh -huh. the, uh, the party. I didn't tell you guys this, but oh. Oh, boy. Um, oh. So speaking of Super Bowl 50 memorabilia, I have a gold Super Bowl 50 beer bottle that I'm going to oh. sign and bring. Mm. I have like a six pack, so I'm going to bring it and I'm going to give it away. At the, yeah. uh, Let's go. At the party. So I think it'll be dope. Don't drink the beer. Yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I would not drink it. So Todd's gonna make that's a disclaimer. That's a disclaimer now. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta go to court. I told you, do not drink the beer. Um, but it'll be there, and you guys can. Uh, it'll be like a little raffle. We'll raffle it yeah. up. Yeah, you gotta I hope sign I win. a waiver. You gotta sign a waiver before you yeah, buy it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before you get the beer. Yeah. I hope um, I win. My, uh, I think it was my uncle gave me. You know what a bomber beer is? Like the, it's kind of like a wine bottle, but it's beer. Yeah. Um, glass has like the cork on it. He gave me one of those for my 20 first birthday and uh, i wanted to save it for like sometime special to drink and then i just totally forgot about it and mm. i was cleaning out my room in my parents house last week so this would have been 10 the beer was 10 years old Dang. and or last at some point in the last couple of months and uh, i'm like well i'm not keeping this and i'm definitely not drinking it so let me just dump it I took, you know how there's the metal yeah. part on top of the cork part? Oh, yeah. I unscrewed that, and it immediately exploded, dented my ceiling, the Dang. cork. So wow. that's what happens to old beers. It like of just course, somehow yeah. gets like so fermented that it is just huh. it's wanting to come out. I wonder Slack's what happens if right you drink it. Drunk. Oh, yeah. Slack's house right now is like tipsy. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> yeah. I wonder, like, if you drink that, would it be like 50% be alcohol? Yeah. yeah. It would have to be like a crazy amount of alcohol. It also <laughs> yeah. might just be like poison. It's yeah. true. I thought yeah. it would be sick. 
There's only you would one be way very to find safe. out, Henry. I'll buy you I'm a not... beer, and you can drink it in 10 years. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, we'll keep that in mind. <laughs> if Hank's still here in 10 years. <laughs> wow. You don't think wow. I'm going to survive the next dark. 10 years? Not yeah, you're talking about like, like a DN, working a DNVR. You're talking about oh. living. Babe, that Celsius right there is going to... I just assumed wow. I was going to be here till I die. Yeah. Did uh-huh. you just call him Babe? Yeah, I call him Babe. I love that. That's amazing. That was weird. We can move along. Okay, so Henry or Todd, what's... The second biggest position of need for the Broncos right now. Um, I think there's two. There's like a couple that I would point to. I don't know if I have a favorite out of the out of the top. Okay. So I would say edge rusher, corner. I'm still going to say tight end, even though Greg Dulcich may be healthy. Yep. I, I think I still want to say tight end. Uh, I think those are my top three. It's Fair. tough because like, to me, there's like a difference in like free agency need and draft need because like draft need, you're bringing a rookie in to like plug this hole, which means like I, if you could add anything to this team, like a, a starting caliber edge rusher is really tempting. I think a starting receiver is pretty tempting too. Like if you can just go get a guy who gives you a thousand yards a year, even with those other guys you have there, I think that that would be an option in terms of draft needs though. I'd be tempted to take a tackle. Just, just like it, it, maybe not in the first round because that obviously would be a player you expect to play. But just getting somebody a developmental option when you're probably moving on from Garrett Bowles, you're probably getting rid of Mike McGlinchey in the next couple of years. That could kind of help. And uh, like their immediate needs, like cornerback. But is a rookie really going to come in and and outplay Damari Mathis and Riley Moss? Like maybe, maybe not. So it's it's a good point that you bring up. Is are we viewing this? like the needs that the Broncos have to identify in the draft. The way I was viewing it, and I'm not sure the way you guys mm-hmm. are viewing it, just what are the needs the Broncos have on April 15th? And we'll do a little mock draft to kind of take your perspective, Henry, of like, okay, mm-hmm. which needs do the Broncos yeah. need to get in the draft? But at least that's the way I was viewing it. Okay. Just like, what needs, is it, what's the second biggest need on the team right now? I think a playmaker, an edge rusher, or a corner. Mm, I think I think center you're probably patched up enough with Mustafer that like that's just not a, a super important position. So like whether it's a, a tight end or a receiver or game changing running back, that would be in the conversation for me. I think corner is very much in the cor- conversation and edge rusher. Hmm. You guys are, I mean Todd, you had a shorter list than Henry, and yours was still three. Henry, you just named a ton. I could even go one step further and say like. Every position outside and take the opposite approach. Be like, okay, what position do they actually not really have a need at? Safety's probably one of them, but like you could still make a case you that definitely a could. spot um, next to Brandon Jones is open for the taking. Yep. Um, uh, inside li- inside linebackers a need. Um, defensive line, you could maybe defensive line you don't have maybe yeah you don't have to call that need. need like your need is for like a sixth player who can rotate in right and mike purcell would be a great option for that left tackle right tackle left guard right guard not needs and then uh, every other position is like a need to some extent and maybe like they're almost even in my mind so todd i think i think you mentioned maybe the biggest ones mm-hmm. and that what, what mm-hmm. were the three it was corner uh Outside linebacker, edge rusher, yep. and tight end. Yeah. And that tight end one is pretty big. Mm-hmm. Just because mm-hmm. at some point with the player, you get to a point where it's like, man, I really like Greg Dulcich when he's healthy. Mm-hmm. But now this is the second year where you're like, if we get anything from him, for me, it's going to be gravy. It's not something I'm expecting, though. So uh, they re-signed Troutman after the season. Mm-hmm. And that's about it. That's a pretty big need right there. You don't have like a starter that you can count on, in my opinion. No, um, I think you need a, a dynamic tight end. I think you can see across the league, the tight ends are taking over the game. Mm-hmm. So you need somebody that can go catch for catch or pass for pass for Travis Kelsey. Um, you need that dynamic pass catcher. I think it's going to expand the offense. You don't have to worry about the tight end. Um, you know, you can stay in sub personnel and you don't have to go to, to dime or nickel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can, I mean, you can stay in base. You don't have to go to dime or nickel. And then you don't, 
have to adjust for him, and that can't open up the running game, which can't open up the passing game. Like it, it all trickles off of each other. Um, so I think it's needed. Yeah, I, I think so too. And I think Adam Troutman, he's to me, he's a, a starting tight end, but he's a starting tight end who you'd much rather be like a really good number two tight end. Uh, and if Greg Dulcich can step up and be that guy, it's great. I mean, and, and there's a chance it happens. Like there is a real chance that at the end of the year, we're saying like, oh, thank goodness you have Greg Dulcich. He could be your second biggest playmaker this year behind Cortland Sutton, just given that there's so many guys on that same tier. But again, like if, if you can add a tight end who can make plays, you know, I did a mock draft last night on the website, uh, which you can check out if you're a diehard. And I had Jaheim Bell, who I really like from Florida State, who's like an undersized tight end. He's like six foot two, but pretty thickly built. Um, and he's just a run after the catch guy. Like he gets check downs. He plays like Jonu Smith. Like they'll put him in the backfield, let him lead block. But even just somebody like that, like you don't even necessarily need like a freak who can, who can stretch the seam. You just need something offensively there because you finished last among all NFL teams and receiving yards from tight ends last year. So whether it's a st- seam stretcher, whether it's a guy who can just give you something underneath, you really do need to find something at that position. Broncos making a little move right now. They're signing defensive tackle Angelo Blackson, who played for Vance Joseph in Arizona in 2022, a defensive lineman. So now... That's Henry, your rotation guy. Yeah, I was going to say. Is that your there we go. Right yeah, there? so you don't have the need for the sixth guy anymore. Yeah, exactly. So um, Broncos just eliminated 31. a little need right there. Yeah, he's 31 years old. What's wrong with that? <laughs> it's a great. I just. I'd I'm say su- that's young in my mind. Yeah. I'm mostly surprised. I feel like I've never heard of him before. Drafted he, in 2015. He was born in uh, the same year Todd and I were, which is what year, Henry? Up. 1992. There you yeah. go. Were you, oh, you, were you guys also build in, or born in Wilmington, Delaware? No. No. November 14th. That. I am six foot four, 305 pounds, just <laughs> wow. like Angelo, though. Um, he's a guy that started 42 games in his career, played in over 120 games, and last year spent time with the Jaguars. Didn't start in a game, but played in 11 games. Um, had three fumble recoveries, which is pretty impressive. 13 tackles. So, I mean, exactly the type of player that you said the Broncos exactly. need along the defensive line. Just that um, inside rotational guy. So, there they go. Probably not going to use a first-round pick on an interior defensive lineman. Mm-hmm. And that's mainly Malcolm Roach. And uh, mm-hmm. still DJ Jones, still on the team right now. Uh, and, of course, Zach Allen. So pretty set at the defensive line, which it's nice to not have that need going into the draft since pretty much everything else is one. Definitely. Yeah. Then Henning's in there, too. Yeah, it's true. So you do have some so young depth there. And Roach is you're young, basically too, set. 25. Yeah. Yeah. And if Uzurike gets reinstated, because, what, he's eligible at the end of July? Yeah. I think July 24th, July 31st, something like that. If he gets reinstated, then all of a sudden you have, like, one more guy with some upside, too. Is there any way the Broncos can count on any to come back and be anything? I mean, he was uh, played one year with the Broncos and then suspended for an entire year. He was a fourth round pick i believe yeah that's what the broncos got back. yeah it was the only other thing they got back from the seahawks and the russell wilson trade was that pick to draft any todd how from an outside perspective i think it's like impossible for a young guy only his second year in his career to miss a full season and then try to come back at the beginning of august am i right or wrong on that no it's tough um i think it depends on um the person he is and the caliber of player he is because i've seen a lot of people go through um, bad situations, crazy situations, or have to miss time in college and come back and bounce back. Um, you think about Alexander Johnson and his situation mm, at Tennessee yeah. and had to miss time and, you know, bounced around and came and found a home and then actually played tremendously when he was a starter. <laughs> so can't say it can't happen. You know, I've seen it happen before. So just the, it just depends on him as a man and how hard he's been working, you know, this whole year. Yeah. Well, and the other thing with Alexander is that because he, he was obviously like a freak in college, mm-hmm. like all SEC, all that sort of stuff. And he came back and was a good player. Like he, he was a lot of fun too. Like he made some like big, play, some like loud plays. Yep. But you also wonder if he hadn't missed that time, could he have been like a Pro Bowl player, mm-hmm. you know? And so while he was able to work his way back to being an NFL player, and I think an NFL starter, you wonder 
if if there was just more in the tank if that all hadn't happened. Maybe. But if he can bounce back to even that level, I think I'm happy. That would I think be incredible. That's a good, I think sure. that would still be a good pick for the Broncos. Yeah. So the charges were dropped last month. So and so he was a part of the Iowa State thing where like seven of those guys uh, got caught for betting on Iowa State games. And then when he was with the Broncos, he was betting on NFL games. He was betting on the Broncos to win, though, right, is what we know. Yeah. I so it's still not great, but we, we just haven't seen – I guess Calvin Ridley got reinstated, um, but he wasn't necessarily betting on his own games, right? And he was not with the team when he it's was true. betting. It's true. So this will be like there's just no precedent. So yeah. And, and none of these guys had interpreters. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Their Nobody mistake was speaking English. Yeah. Yeah. Oh they didn't have gosh. 700 million dollars that they could fall back on. Dang. It's uh man, it is wild how MLB is just gonna. May, may, maybe Otani truly was. Um, not doing anything, mm-hmm. but the MLB, they can't lose him. No, uh, th- th- There's not even equivalent in the NFL. That's like the NFL 10 years ago losing uh, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Drew One Brees. All, all, yeah. or like all of those guys. Yeah. Because, because no Otani is like yeah. for sure, not just the biggest, but like he is baseball right now, especially mm-hmm. on a global market. Yeah, for yeah. sure. They're, they're going to they're gonna make sure. Yeah. yeah. Just Who's, like... Yeah. Uh, Coaches, and I'm sure you saw this all the time, Todd. Coaches do not treat players the same. No. Nope. If you're a star player and you make the same mistake off field, on field, as a guy that's like an undrafted guy that's getting paid veteran minimum or the minimum that doesn't have any guarantees, they don't mind making an example out of that guy. Yep. But a star does the exact same thing. They're not just gonna cut him. No. That, that may, may be a little slap on the wrist. You know, Mike Tomlin has this saying. Um, he said, I'm going to treat everybody fair, but I'm not going to treat everybody the same. Uh-huh. Like, we're yeah. all players. We all have a role. And if we get in <laughs> trouble, I'm going to be fair. But you can't expect your punishment to be the same as the starter, pro yeah. bowler, all pro. Like, it's going to be different. Yep. So, and then you're like, yeah. well, coach, that's not fair. And he's like, you're right. Yeah, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Do this <not> fair. <laughs> yeah. Prove this unfair. Yeah, like, be yeah. good. Yeah. Be yeah. good enough to where you get that unfair treatment in a positive way for you okay so tight end maybe two on the list let's nail that down after i tell you about our friends over at factor (laughs) meals where factor meals oh my goodness if you want a good meal whether it's for breakfast lunch or dinner factor meals has it coming for you because they've got smoothies in the morning Mm -hmm. they've got little shots that you can take for that that help um you know with your immune system to get greens in and they've also just have delicious meals which only takes two minutes to heat up and the thing that impresses me the most about factor meals is the how amazing how do i say this kind of got myself in a rabbit hole right here how how amazing and juicy their meat is I'll just go out there and say go. it like that because yeah. that's there just you, you wanted to say that. It, it, no, I didn't know what else to <laughs> say. Like, <laughs> like, Todd, the meat is good. You just got to come out and say that the meat is good. And that's what she is, said. And that. juicy. <laughs> there you that's go. What Zach said. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is in like, I've never uh, had another meal where the food is delivered to you, like from outside of your house, and the quality is so good. And like I said, it only takes two minutes to microwave to yep. get. Um, so you want to sign up for Factor Meals. And when you do, we've got a little deal for you. If you use the code DNVR Broncos 50 over at FactorMeals.com and then slash DNVR Broncos 50, you're going to get 50% off their meals when you sign up. No mess, no fuss. Great gourmet meals just sent straight to you. So go to FactorMeals.com slash DNVR Broncos 50 to get 50% off. Shout out to our friends over at Coors Light. Now, this is a beer I recommend you drink. That other old 10-year beer, don't yeah. drink that. <laughs> yes. Go get some Coors Light. Um, they're definitely the beer that is made to chill. This week, I definitely had a few Coors Light mm. um, Sunday afternoon after mm-hmm. my long Saturday and my long uh, Sunday. It was definitely time to chill, and that's why I reached for a Coors Light. And so when you want to hit a reset, grab the beer that was made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door. With Instacart, go to CoorsLight.com forward slash DMVR. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Todd, what position would you put as a second if you had to pick one? Second biggest need. Um, let's go corner. Mm, okay, Henry, pick one. Can I just say, like, 
playmaker, offense, like juice. No. But are you okay. going from the wide receiver spot? Are you going from it the could tight end spot? Any are you going them. from the running backs? It could be any of them. I oh I could also just go corner. No oh, or just edge rusher. Well, there's there's no like position be, that's called juice, just so you know. If there was though, and the Broncos had it, they'd be a good offense. Um, I think uh, you know I might just go. I'll just go corner too. You know, it's it scares me a little bit because I do think, like, if you just had one more guy who's giving you a thousand yards on offense, you would, like, the defense could kind of hold its own, but. I also don't even know how you find that guy, so I'll just say, give me a corner. Yeah, I see what you guys are saying, and you're not wrong on that. Um, I do think the Broncos really do like Riley Moss. Um, mm-hmm. They brought in, uh, oh, who was the corner they brought in last week, who visited on Friday, didn't actually end up signing him. Levi Wallace, that's who I'm thinking of. So the Broncos mm-hmm. clearly think there's some sort of a need there to be continuing to do this research on other corners, but I have to go on the offensive side of the mm. ball. So Henry... You're not wrong saying playmaker, yeah. whatever spot that comes in. Because low-key, the Broncos, you, you brought this up to Baldy last week. The Broncos aren't, like, great at the running back position. You no. hope Javante returns back to his rookie form. Mm-hmm. Um, because last year, he certainly fell off at the end. And that's understandable. But, like, if he is more of the second half mm-hmm. of last year than he was the first half and his rookie year, then... They don't really have a, a number one back, exactly. but you do like what Samaje brings as a third back. You love what Jaleel brings that juice, but like there's still holes there. There's obviously holes at receiver mm-hmm. as well. So I would just have to go on, on the offensive side. You could even go center, um, mm-hmm. but I'd probably go maybe that's that end spot to bring that juice there. And that's why Brock Bowers, when we talk about him, it's like, man, drafting tight end at 12, mm-hmm. that is early. And it is but it, he's a great player, top five player in this draft, that's also at a massive position of need. So it's actually not like that much of a stretch for the Broncos. For the Chiefs, if they had like, you know, the 12th pick and well, you have Travis Kelsey, you don't need a tight end. That would probably be a stretch. They're way too much of a luxury pick mm-hmm. for them, but it wouldn't be for the Broncos. Okay, let's, let's kind of change this conversation to Henry. What you were saying, like, mm-hmm. okay, now we're in the draft. Now we have to identify what spots we want to plug. And let's do it with a little mock draft style here. We're going to mock the Broncos' eight picks in this draft, but we're going to mock them by like the ideal position you would want. If all things were equal, if there's an elite quarterback on the board at 12 and an elite edge rusher mm-hmm. on the board at 12, which direction would you want them to go? We're going to do that for all eight picks, starting with number 12, any case to be made outside of just going quarterback here? No. Your biggest need is quarterback. I mean, I guess the only case we made is that, like, oh, you're picking a quarterback at 12. It's not like it's a top three pick, so it might not be the guy. But, like, we've seen quarterbacks in that range work out plenty of times. So, yeah. It, number one in a perfect world, you're getting a quarterback here who's worthy of number 12. 100%. Yep. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, crazy enough, was drafted number 10 mm-hmm. overall. You're just two picks behind that. Yep. Um, Mahomes is also, was he the third quarterback chosen in that draft? Yes. Was he just a second? No, he was second. It was only Trubisky. Was that not? Yeah, that wasn't Deshaun, was it? Oh, yeah, it was Deshaun. Yeah. Was it Deshaun? And so Deshaun was, I think, eight, just okay. a couple of picks before that. Um, so the third quarterback, probably not going to be a third quarterback at 12, but you don't have to get the best one there. Um, Todd, any disagreements? No, I'm, I'm rocking with it. Didn't think so. Broncos don't have a second round pick. Oh, no, he was the second quarterback. Deshaun went at 12. Deshaun oh, okay. went. Oh. Okay. He oh. was second. Huh, that's interesting. Would you take... Man, it's so hard with Deshaun. I was going to say, you have to take the... <laughs> yeah. You have to put the off-field stuff to the side. Mm-hmm. Tough to do. It's very tough to do, because that's a big reason why he was traded. <laughs> exactly. Um, just as a player. Just his performances in Houston, I think he's a good yeah. player. And, oh, yeah, because he was like MVP pa- conversation. But over the past few years, too, no, where his play's been down. But, but no, that was that after was he had to like sit day. out. Mm. He was like suspended. Yeah. Like it's like we talked it's about with Alexander. Dynam- yeah, like, it's, it's a like, different like, dynamic. Yeah. It's playing Houston, you probably take number one overall. Like yeah. you're willing yes. to do that yeah. for number one overall. But then you mix in these past few years, there's been some downs. Like he has played worse than Russell Wilson, arguably, over these yeah. past two years. Definitely. Yeah, it is hard to separate that. Okay, so with the Broncos next pick, and let us know in the Toyota chat where you are going with these picks. What position 
would you want the Broncos to grab at 76? Again, all things are equal in terms of talent. Um, I'll probably say cornerback here because, one, I feel like it's their second knee, but also for myself, I feel like you can get good linebackers, tight ends mm. uh, further on in the draft. I feel like edge rushers and quarterbacks, you got to kind of get in the first round. They're going to be dynamic as well as – Tackles. I'm not getting the tap. No disrespect to anybody, but mm -hmm. if I need a tackle on the job, I'm getting him in the first round. <laughs> yeah. You look at it now. We had other tackles, okay. and we went and got one first rounder and another first rounder. Like, yep. oh, tackles. I feel like they need to go in the point. first round. So I would probably go cornerback here. That's fair. I do. I. I don't think I would go cornerback just because you've already got Damari Mathis, who is a fourth round pick. You've got Riley Moss, who's a third round pick. I don't know that you need another one of those guys. Like I would, I would rather use this pick somewhere else and then just sign Levi Wallace. Like sign a vet who can know who can do the job instead of another one of like, well, maybe he works out and is a good player. Like I think you can find a good corner there, but it just makes too much competition at that spot among the young guys. Whereas I'd rather just have him compete with a veteran, use that pick on a tackle. <laughs> 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 but, but again, yeah. like that's where. Like you, you plug him in and you develop him, and if it works out, then you you get a steal at tackle, and it's way easier to move on from Garrett Bowles after this year. Um, but what happened it, to your love for Polchevsky? I mean, he's a he's a developmental tackle, but I mean, you're just playing the odds. Like I, whoever you get here, there's there's maybe a couple spots where you could add somebody who can play right away. Um, like you could you could probably find a defensive lineman to add to the rotation here. Um, you, you kind of plug that up and that's not like a position of value. So I'd be looking at like a premium position, somebody who has, mm. has the skills, but maybe is raw, a young guy who you think you can coach up for a year and will be ready to help out next year. And people will be like, Oh, you got him in the third round. What about some like middle ground in between what you two are saying? Mm -hmm. And you go center where you kind of go the position that has the most, not, not the most value. What's the right way to put this? Like you could get a starter here in the third round yeah most depth but also like maybe actually it's the least value position where a great player falls to you and you get a starter here because todd i agree with you like um with tackles if you if you need a tackle mm -hmm. you, you got to just like edge rusher uh and just like quarterback you got to draft these guys high to have mm -hmm. the best shot but then to your point henry about corner third round corner has been a nightmare that is true. for the Broncos going back way before Riley Moss because Riley Moss still might pan out, but mm -hmm. what is it? It's Brendan Langley. It's Isaac Adam. It's, um, you can even throw another third round cornerback yeah. in that group that just did not pan out. Not because it hasn't panned out. doesn't mean that it's not going to pan out eventually. And there are third round quarterbacks, cornerbacks that have succeeded, but those, those truly valuable positions, if you need to rely on them, their rookie or mm -hmm. second year, you got to use a first or a second round pick on him. Um, but center, we saw it with Cushenberry. Maybe not the mm -hmm. best three years at the, the start yeah. of his career. And maybe there is somewhat of a learning curve there. And do you want to pair a rookie quarterback with a rookie center? It's not mm -hmm. ideal. But if you want to find like an impact player, center might be the spot you have the best opportunity to in the third round. Yeah, I think you can get a really good uh, center here. Uh, for me, I probably would pick center later just because I've seen Matt Paradis come in as a six-round draft pick yep. and not good miss point. a snap and be mm -hmm. a really, really good center in this league for many years. So um, I know you can get a center anywhere in the league, but if, if we really need one to come in and start, you can definitely get a starter in the third round. You can. I don't know that you're getting somebody who's an upgrade over, like, Sam Mustafer, who isn't the best center in the NFL by any means, but... He's played a bunch of snaps, and in day one, is he going to be better than a rookie third rounder? I think probably. Um, and like you said, like it's the putting a center, a rookie center with a rookie quarterback that kind of scares me away. Yeah, that's totally fair. And both, it's it's tough here. Real quick, just to throw another one out there that people are mentioning in the comments. What about another quarterback? And you try to do the Washington thing where you double up on quarterbacks and see if any of them hit. Maybe you go with a quarterback first round, then you go another one again. Maybe you get a Kirk Cousins in there. I'd rather He's, wait. Yeah. I am okay with that down the line. If you go your first two picks or quarterback, also that would... Uh, then you're you cutting Stidham. you if it's like Spencer Rattler too? That would be crazy. Yeah. Like yeah. the best of the rest, as we called it last week, and you're getting the best of the rest. That puts 
and you aren't trading up for a quarterback at four, you're picking one at 12, that would be some competition. And I'd Super rather just, I'd just kind of rather go in all on one guy. Yep. And maybe the Broncos have three fifth round picks, which we get to. Maybe that's when you do the Kirk Cousins. Because what, Kirk was a fourth round pick? Yeah. A fourth round pick, and RJ3 was a second overall pick. Mm hmm. There was no drama. Mm -hmm. Everyone knew this was RG3's yep. job. There was no competition until years in when RG3 didn't work out in Washington, and then that's when things changed. So I, w I wouldn't like that, but I think we will eventually talk about that. But both of you guys said corner, right? No, he said... I said uh, no corner. Oh, you said I no said corner. I said would, I would probably go tackle and just get an athlete who you can develop. Hmm. I can't go tackle. You can't? Mm -hmm. I can't go tackle. Is there anything else? I mean, receiver, like, I don't think you need, like, a third-round receiver. I'd rather go receiver. center than tackle, so I'll, I'll okay. go with You sure? There's the yeah, boat. Yeah, yeah. Go there center? Yeah. Okay. Rather um, than tackle, yeah. Man, although saying I wouldn't want to go tackle, I do stand by that because of what Todd said about you just got to use the, the premium picks on mm -hmm. those positions. Um, or if you really want to take a dart, you use one of your fifth-round picks. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the fact the Broncos haven't tackled or drafted an offensive tackle since Garrett Bowles is wild. I'm not talking about in the first round. I'm talking about in any rounds. They haven't drafted a tackle. And then so you look at just the rotating door that they've had at right tackle for almost a decade. No wonder. Mm -hmm. They haven't even tried to fill that spot. Now, obviously, they did in free agency with McGlinchey last year. But that is just absolutely wild. Okay, the Broncos now have a fourth round pick. You guys think about the very ideal position they should go there as I tell you about our friends over at Illegal Pete's. Illegal Pete's is perfect for patios, and we are in patio season. I spent some time over at Illegal Pete's this weekend. 80 degrees yesterday. Wow. A nice margarita for a Sunday fun day, and their happy hour is every single day, um, and it is so long. Up until 8 p.m., they've got the best happy hour in town. They've got the best margs in town. They've got the best queso in town. And then they have so many other great things like their tacos, their burritos. You can even get fish tacos, which are really good there. Illegal Pete's is undefeated. So if you live here, you got to check out Illegal Pete's in Boulder, <laughs> Fort Collins, Denver. Um, they might even have some in the Springs as well. But then you got to check them out if you're visiting because you're going to get a great Colorado experience with delicious food. Illegal Pete's is your spot for burritos, buddies, and beer. And check us out uh, the 25th at the Breckenridge Brewery. Yes. For our draft coverage. You can't miss it. You want to join us at the Breckenridge Brewery Farmhouse for our live DMVR Broncos draft show on April 25th. I will be there. Henry Chisholm will be there. Ryan Koningsberg will be there. Nice. Uh, we'll break down the NFL draft <laughs> live. Zach won't be there, but he will be uh, dropping in on us every once in a while, yeah. giving us some updates, surprising his takes, surprising us, yeah. uh, giving us some inside information. Um, a burger and a house beer are included in your ticket price. Before and after the show, you'll be able to hang out and meet, and meet at a meet and greet with the DMVR crew. We will be providing some fun giveaway, swag, print, pint glasses. Uh, Raising Cane's reps will be there to hand out some great swag, footballs, etc. You can't miss it. You want to be there to join us. Uh, we have some great giveaways, some great things to give out, and it's going to be a fun time. The tickets are very limited, so get yours today at thednvr.com. Man, Breck's food is also delicious. Their burgers are great. Illegal Pete's food is great. I got to give a shout out to our draft coverage, which is brought to you by Raisin Cane's. Other great food. Man, this show right before lunch, mm -hmm. and we just get to talk about all this amazing food. So check out our friends over at Cane's Chicken Fingers, where you can order online at RaisinCane's.com or through their mobile app. Raisin Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love. Okay, fourth round pick. Where are the Broncos going? <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up, Brandon? Uh, oh, that was Brandon. I, <laughs> Tuesday. 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 Today's Monday. Yeah. Um, I wish it was Tuesday. <laughs> yes. I couldn't see. We have these blinding lights, and I swear it was Brandon's voice, but, like, you just look, and you can't see. It's just yelling you, stuff. But you know it's Brandon, even if it's pitch dark, and Brandon talks to you, you it's know it's true. Brandon. Who else has walked through our studio and yelled during a show? <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's the only guy who would yeah, do I that. I guess the, uh, the owner of the company could do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. can do whatever he wants. <laughs> um, I would go tight end here. Oh. I think this is where there's still some good athletes on the board. Um, guys who could rotate in right away. So it jumps out to me at least. Todd? I agree. I think tight end. Boom. Um, it's good. I was deciding between tight end and linebacker, but I think you can go linebacker with the next pick. Yeah. So I think tight end right here would be good. 
So then you mentioned it. Broncos have three fifth round picks. No, do they have two fourth round picks right here? One fourth, three fifth. Is One fourth, three fifths. We go in linebacker? Yeah. Inside? I like Inside, it. Yeah. 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 This is usually you can still find a guy here who's like, you read the scouting report and it's just like, oh, yeah, he's a starting NFL linebacker. Like he's. Uh, he had like 150 tackles last year at some like random Smart. Big Ten school. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, I've never heard of this guy. And it's like, well, he's not going to be able to run with a tight end probably. And you're like, well, let's get somebody else to do that then. So we're talking about, a f- oh, we're drafting just Todd Davis right here. Oh, I like oh, it. How do you feel about going from wow. undrafted I heard to you could get him a little drafted? Later. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Like 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 we're not going we're not to make the same mistake twice. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> oh, wow. I like that you hear. Um, <laughs> with this pick, What's interesting about it is you got Josie Jewell in the fourth round. Now, mm-hmm. this is the fifth round, but you got Josie Early Jewell in the fifth. fourth round. And uh, he was a guy that absolutely deserved a second contract, yep. got that from the Broncos. Yeah. And Josie. Then just what? I mean, the, the Big oh, Ten yeah, guy, yeah. a bunch of tackles. Yeah, exactly. Not like a crazy... Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. the the first step isn't... Exactly. Or, the instincts are good, but like yeah. uh, just straight 40 speed. It's like, oh, yeah, you can throw him out there and he's going to be just fine. Yep. It's like, well, why but is he still here? It's because he didn't run a four... Four, he one ran a four seven or so at the combine, yeah. and sometimes, well, not sometimes, every year, that just will get a good player knocked down the draft board. So, yep. especially with the way the Broncos are set up right now, could be a starter. Pro- probably not. Like I don't think we're coming here Monday after the draft and saying this fifth round linebacker is going to start, but could could yeah. start next. Give you two down. Yeah. There's no pressure on him. I think it's a yep. good spot because. Um, if he needs to develop a little bit, we have the you know the bodies to do that. But if he comes out and just balls out in camp, then you know, besides Alex, w- we have some you know liquidity at the sp- at the exactly. position, so mm-hmm. we can put him in if we need to. So good point. It's a good good yep. pick. So now the next fifth round pick, the second of the third fifth round pick, we start to think quarterback. I'm not taking another quarterback. Ever. I wouldn't. No, <laughs> I, th- I think I think I think one in the draft is good because then you just run into issues like, are you cutting Stidham? And if yeah. you're cutting Stidham, then all of a sudden you're going in the season with two two quarterbacks in the quarterbacks room or two rookies in the quarterbacks room. You also have like a second year quarterbacks coach. Like I I like the idea of having Stidham in there as like a veteran who's been in the system can teach some things. I don't think you have to cut Stidham though. I think it can be no. Stidham first round, and what ends up happening is you cut Ben DiNucci. Sorry, but nobody ben really. Yeah, nobody really. Nobody really carries exactly. three quarterbacks or though. Cares. <laughs> or cares? Wow. Oh yeah, <laughs> not Benanucci goes. I just I would keep two quarterbacks on the roster, and I I would just have Stidham and a first rounder. I have no need for Joe Milton as much as Zach thinks that I think that I do. So who are you going? Um. I think, let's see, this is another spot where it's a developmental guy. So maybe this is where you go outside linebacker. You, you go for, there's a Michigan guy who I like. I forget his name, Braden Mix something. It's like six foot five, had four and a half sacks last year, but he's just like a freak. Um, is he big the way you yeah. puffed out your chest? Yeah, tats? exactly. Yeah. Like he's, mad. he's all like tattoos <laughs> up his arm. Like, but he's one of those, like, he, he could set the edge. He gives you an option to like, Next year, when Jonathan Cooper, Baron Browning aren't around, or maybe you resign one of them, like you have an option there, somebody who you've been working with. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with an edge guy there. You're not fine with it. No, okay. I, th- I think I'm. I think I'm okay with it. I think let's do it. Outside linebacker. Okay. So that's back to back defense. That is Todd. I'm gonna make the case for quarterback again here. Do you think that this is a smart thing, or do you agree? Uh, with Henry, just ride with that first one at 12. Yeah, I don't know. I think it works for the Redskins. It did. It really worked mm-hmm. out. But yeah. I don't think that was like a president they set before that. And even since then, I don't think like when they drafted Patrick Mahomes, did they draft another quarterback? No, I don't think, think so. Yeah, I don't think that that's something teams like normally yeah. do. Yeah. That was kind of like a out of the out of the norm kind of yeah. thing. And it yeah. worked out. Yeah, it did. Um, but I'm not saying I don't think that's just how every draft goes. So I would probably stay away from quarterback kind of the rest of the draft so then uh, i we need to go back to offense mm-hmm. i think so i'm gonna make a case here for wide receiver and some people are mentioning it here and we're gonna talk about him more in depth but luke mccaffrey <laughs> not just yeah. because uh, the colorado connections the mccaffrey name at the end but i think it could be like a uh, 
little Taysom Hill mm. for Sean Payton, a younger Taysom Hill for Sean Payton, instead of bringing 34-year-old Taysom Hill in here. He's a guy that played um, quarterback in high school, went to Nebraska to play quarterback. It didn't pan out there, so he ends his career um, switching to wide receiver and being dominant at Rice. I think that that's like a perfect player here. But since we're going pick, I would go uh, or position. I go wide receiver because what Henry said, you just need offensive playmakers. And it's not likely that you're going to find like a dominant one right here, but you got to try. Yeah, I think I think a wide receiver is key and specifically a wide receiver that has return abilities. Because if Marvin Mims oh. works out, we need somebody that if Marvin Mims a, needs a deep breath and can't go, yeah. we need a returner. So I think we need somebody that has the versatility to do both just in case Marvin Mims goes off and has 1,500 yards this season and has to play a lot of snaps. I think you already have one of those in uh, Pat Sertan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw him back there and make a couple plays. Shout out to our guy, Pat Sertan. Shout Happy out. birthday oh, yeah, yesterday. True. Yeah, what is he, 24 now? Like, insane. He just feels is, like yeah. he's been in the league forever because he's so good. But mm -hmm. um, happy birthday to our guy, Pat Sertan. All right, two sixth-round picks to end us out here. There's been some good sixth-round picks in the past. Mm -hmm. What position would be the best to hit here since clearly you it's need, not quarterback? You need trenches. Mm. Yeah, and I think it's a wide receiver. I might have gone trenches there too, but um, yeah, offensive line, defensive line, I don't care. Just start start getting guys in the system, developing them, and see if you find any gems. Let's finally draft a tackle. A sixth round first tackle. Time since what do you think Bowles. of a sixth round tackle, Todd? I think he'll be here for a week or two. <laughs> 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 uh, um, the, I mean, Here's the time when you get the maybe slightly better Alex Palchevskis of the world, um, where it's truly, this year. truly developmental. No? I mean, Palchevsky, All-American in the Big Ten. It's true. And what a combo. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, that's kind of wild. He went, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you no. can get Tom Brady with this sixth oh, round yeah. pick. Maybe that's what you say, is Tom Brady is here. Is Tom Brady um, here with this sixth round pick? Okay, I think we're, go we're going tackle, I, that according works. to you here. You okay with that, Todd? Oh, great. Sure. And then great. round us out. We punter. Kick, I want kicker, a pu punter, long snapper. I want a punter. I need a punter. You don't like Dixon? He's okay. Well, that's I just, my guy. I, I just can't get, I, <laughs> I can't get over the fact that we didn't get Ryan Stonehouse. And I just don't want to miss out on yeah. a guy like that again. Like a game that. changer when you least expect it. Yeah, yeah. Some people are like, yeah, draft a running back every year. Now we always have four on the roster. You go through the rookie contract. Yaya's team draft a punter every year. Draft a punter <laughs> until you have Stonehouse. Yep. Um, I go defensive tackle here. Because I think, I mean, sixth round, you might even find somebody who fits into that rotation. Depending on which way you go. If you go for like a big freak, but there's some guys who are like six feet tall, 290 pounds, but can kind of play. Uh-oh. I noticed something. We got to our last pick. Both of you got, well, Todd, you made an argument for third round corner. Mm-hmm. Henry, you've mentioned corner mm -hmm. as a position of need. We don't have a corner yet. Do you draft one just to draft one? I would just sign Levi Wallace. Because mm, you, you got you Riley, you got Tamari, you got Jaquan, you get Levi Wallace, you got Pat Sertan, there's your five. Oh, and Tremont Smith. He's like your best special teamer. So now you've got six on the team. Safety? I mean, again, like, you, kind of, you, have, you did this with Skinner, you did this with DTY. Do you need another sixth, seventh round safety? especially when P.J. Locke, kind of one of those guys. Like with P.J., with Brandon Jones, Stearns, with those guys, you got five on the roster, which is already a big safety room. You can cut DTY and bring in another, but I think defensive line would still be where i go. All right. I can be convinced. We got what, so many D linemen. It's true. Yeah. I think maybe kicker's not a bad. Wow. I don't think we have – we don't have bad kickers now, but it – Will Lutz is on the, on the outs. No, because we can't keep one to develop. You're only, you're only keeping a kicker if he's coming into play. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Sean's not getting rid of his guy. No. Nah. Running back? But then who's leaving in your scenario? You could carry four. It's true. I'm down for a running back. We can really go it's wherever because the, yeah. Broncos, the Broncos always win with undrafted free agents. So uh, it's true. Yeah. Whoever we don't get now, we'll just pick up a good <laughs> yeah. one in free Exactly. And, and with uh, like a six round pick, there's like a 75% chance he makes the team. So it's not the end of the world if it's a guy who misses. Right. If there's somebody you like there. So playmaker? We going running back? Running back works. I'd go defensive line. Just keep 
Final over Matt Hennigan. Yeah, that's true. You have to choose running back or defensive line, Todd. Cor- well, oh, cor- well corner, corner two could be a returner, and Todd was saying about a returner to true. give some, true. some rest to Marvin Mims. So could, those are the, could, my only two options? No, you, no, you <laughs> can go a different way. You could, we, we could Where do just straight returner. Like, that is a position. Yeah. That's the athlete. Returner. That's the juice. That's Let's the juice. 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 This athlete. That's how you. Sometimes you get recruited like out of college. I mean, out of high school mm-hmm. area where some people have position and some people are just athlete. Like we don't know yeah. exactly what he can do, but this kid is talented. He's played wide receiver. He's played corner. Yep. He's been a returner. Just he's an athlete. So is that what yeah. you were, Todd? Uh, that's what they tr- tried to label me as, but you know what I'm saying. Wow. I make my own labels, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that'd linebacker. be a good label to get. <laughs> no, it's a good label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> because I mean, you did do that in high school. You played we'll what? Defensive line, edge. Inside. Inside. Running yeah. back, fullback. Yeah. yeah. Pretty we'll good. You're a do it all guy. So, how do you guys feel about this draft? Look at it. Let us know in the Toyota, um, Toyota chat. What do you guys think, though? If this is the way it unfolds, how do you feel? I feel pretty good. I feel like, you know, they covered their bases. And um, uh, if we can hit on a couple of these guys, I think it'd be a good draft. Yeah. I worry a little bit about rookie center, rookie quarterback. I'd. You could run into some issues there. But, I mean, the center might not even be starting right away anyway. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's solid. To me, I just see quarterback at 12, and I'm like, thank you. (laughs) Thank you. So, uh, I'm happy with it. Let us know what you think. And I think that's all for today. We're going to be dropping a mailbag later on today over on YouTube and the podcast side. And speaking of the podcast, hit us with a five-star review. It really helps us. If you're tuning in on YouTube, hit us with a thumbs up. And, Henry, you've got uh, a little reminder or an ask for people as well from the podcast side. Oh, yeah. Give us a five-star review. Wait, five-star rating and a review. And make sure you turn the downloads on. Like, if your downloads for our podcast are off, turn them on because it really helps our algorithm. Um, and we'd love to grow and grow because this is the fun time of the year. And for some, they used to always be on for people. They used to. But yeah, they, they used to, but then Apple got rid of that. Um which changes a bunch of things. But basically, it really helps us if you turn those back on, um, especially right now, because this is, like I said, like this is the fun part of the year. Like we've hit, like these next three weeks or so, going to be a lot of fun after the Broncos have not been fun for, since like October, maybe? I mean, they started this, no, since since that run, since they were like seven and seven, seven and six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's been about five months of not a whole lot of fun. We got three weeks of fun coming up. The Broncos are fun again. And thank you all so much for tuning in with us today on a big day where the Broncos are back. The draft is next week. We get new uniforms in a week. And we got a fun show on deck tomorrow. We're going to talk with an Arizona Cardinals insider to find (laughs) out what it would take for the Broncos to trade up to number four. So tune in at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Have a great Monday. We all sitting like the mayor. 